MCs with these. They call me Moses. My bank is Dr. Z's and fleas. Uh, yes. Hey, students. Welcome to episode 51 of the Film Student Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Lazzaroni. My guest this week is Morgan Allen from the Yellow Cohort. We talk about pitching to Scott Dickers, how to dub squirrels in iMovie, and writing from abundance. On with the show. For my 21st birthday, uh, my mom wanted to do like like a mom-son trip, mm-hmm. and we're both really into stand-up in New York City was doing their comedy festival, so she was like, why don't we go to New York? We'll which, go see a show. Which festival? It's called the New York Comedy Festival. Okay, that one. Okay. Um, so we went up, and we are kind of like, what are we going to do while we're there? Because we went to see Brian Regan. Mm-hmm. Um, but to fill in the time, she was like, let's take an improv class. Second City has workshops. So we did one with Matt Hovde, and part of the workshop was a Q&A for the school, mm-hmm. um, which I had... We didn't, my mom or I didn't know anything about. So we're like, let's go, we'll check it out. Like, let's see what it's about. And we went in, and it was like, it was really professional. Like, they were kind of up on a stage. They had the panel there to talk. Jack was there, and they were recording it on cameras. And there was like an open bar and mm-hmm. this whole thing. So we're like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I looked into the school, and I was like, that's perfect. Um, so I'll give it a shot. I was in school for business uh, i was concentrating in marketing but this was kind of like writing and performing was kind of like the passion i had that i just kind of kept to myself yeah um like i was doing all the stuff i could at my school but it's like an engineering school um so it doesn't have like a billion options right um although i I feel like there's always an overlap with like engineering and arts the the like for for any kind of math and arts or or technology and arts those two seem to kind of rise together versus like businesses yeah is the thing that's kind of standalone right (laughs) right. i don't know too many business majors that are like heavy musicians although i say that and two of the guys in my old band in college were business guys but they were they were standalone yeah i I think the math and music go go hand in hand yeah a lot of the i did band in middle school what'd you play um percussion okay um i could see you hitting some drums (laughs) (laughs) middle school band baby i tried to do drums in in uh in middle school but they they had too many of them already (laughs) so they they were like no you can play trombone because you're tall and you can hold out to seventh (laughs) position and i hated it (laughs) you got typecasted for trombone yeah well and then i then i quit that went through the choir for a little bit and then got back into music uh playing upright bass same thing you're tall enough to hold an upright bass you you should go play that we pick you yeah but uh, so what what kind of stuff were you doing in did you did you do act and stuff in high school? Um, I, I I did a lot of acting when I was younger, like uh, the local theater plays mm-hmm. and stuff and like took a bunch of classes at our community center. I really liked it. Um, then when I got to high school, I did like the theater electives, but didn't do like I didn't audition for the plays or anything. because I was oh, okay. playing sports at the time and just that's kind of where all my attention went. Um, what was your what was your sports lacrosse okay uh, just that yeah nice um i went to high school where they made you do two things yeah so you could, do two yeah things? you had to do oh, you had yeah. to get two athletic credits and one arts credit ah. so like almost everybody did some weird combination well, that's like, actually pretty cool that they like yeah encouraged the arts oh yeah yeah um and so but it was it was weird seeing like sometimes mm. jocks doing stuff that they <laughs> normally wouldn't do or vice versa yeah there was a pottery class that was pretty heavily attended by a lot of pottery. <laughs> meatheads. That would be fun. <laughs> pottery with the jacks. Um, but I was in. I did a bunch of like extra, like clubs and stuff. So yeah. I was just kind of spread out all over the place. Um, and I got to college, wanted to get back into it. So I was doing acting training in Raleigh at um, at a stage company, mm-hmm. and then I was trying to do all the creative writing classes I could. Um, and then this kind of came along, and I was like, "That's that's perfect. Let's give that a shot. Yeah, um, see what happens." So now we're here. Nice. What'd you do for your uh, submission stuff for, uh, for um, the school? So for the the piece I did um, was an idea I had been work like just kind of writing for a long time, but was never going to do anything with. Um, it's a spoof on. A- do you remember Apple's campaign? There's an app for that. Mm-hmm. So it's a spoof on that. I used to work for Apple during that campaign. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, you have the Apple back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have Apple everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and it's a spoof on that about America. It's called There's an Amendment for That. Okay. Um, and it was, I had the intention of making it like an ongoing thing, and then I just wrote it as a script, and I was having a conversation with my brother about my application because I'd never done any, like I'm really bad at technology. So producing it was kind of the big roadblock. I was like, well, I can just submit it as a script. And my brother's like, why would you do that? Just go ahead and give it a shot. They don't, they're not looking to see if you can run a camera. They just want to see like what yeah. your voice is. So my brother helped me um, like over my winter break from school, worked for a while on that, got it made. Nice. And put it on the application. It, I rewatch it sometimes. I'm like, wow, like the lighting is horrible. The sound is bad. But I'm like, well, it's but the, 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 that's the thing. Like, that's that's not the concern here. It's, right. It seems to be way more storytelling. Right. So if you're doing that part right, like you can find people that'll do the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, you you can hire somebody like me that can, <laughs> <they> can <laughs> use the camera. That's yeah. not <laughs> my. Uh, I think my term three budget is all gonna be an editor and a DP. <laughs> <laughs> get the best. Spend I can. a good amount on sound. Spend yeah. more. Oh, spend. Yeah. Sp- uh, uh, I was just. Uh, did the workshop for for uh, the new class coming in mm-hmm. for for camera and, and lighting, and I told him, uh, you know, I know you're here for camera and lighting, but the most money you should ever spend on your set, or the most talented person that should be on your set besides your actor and, and you all, is your sound person. And then like, you picked me for sound for your. Final. You did great. You did great. I don't know what you're complaining about. <laughs> <laughs> But no, like if if you've got the like good equipment for it and you've got smart people that, that can run it, like it it yeah. makes it such such a difference because mm-hmm. you can have something something that looks like crap and sounds, sounds great good. that will still sell. I mean, look at uh, um, Cloverfield or no, Cloverfield looked fine. Uh, that's not the one I think. Uh, uh, Blair Witch Project that was the like new shot one or the on, old one, the old one, the one that was shot on like VHS, but yeah. the audio is still all good, and that's what that's what really matters. Dude, I watched that for the first time, like, last year. Um, when I was growing up, like, hanging out with my brother and his friends, we lived kind of in a rural area, so we'd be, like, out jumping on the trampoline at night, and you're just surrounded by woods. And my brother's friend would always tell the Blair Witch story, and it freaked me out so much. Like, we would go inside, and I never watched it. And, like, a year ago, I was like, I need to see what that was actually about. Yeah. Is this older brother, younger brother? Older brother. Older brother. Two what does he do? He is in D.C. right now, actually. Where, um, where I came from? Yeah, he's. I think he, he lives right in the National Mall. Um, he works for a consulting firm. Um, like most people in D.C. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not working for government, you're consulting the right. government. He's, yeah, he's uh, <laughs> consulting the government. <laughs> so is he is he still working right now with the with the uh, yeah. strike and everything? Yeah, okay. they're they're privately employed. Um, he's actually consulting for australia for oh, okay. a good bit of his he's only been at this company for like less than a year yeah um, he a switched fr- a friend of mine's working for a private contractor though but and she's she actually ran out of stuff that she can bill hours on because they're they're not open to accept new projects oh, coming wow. in so even though she works for a private employer like she's stuck effectively for a load until government. yeah Jeez. So after the after the current project she's got is done, yeah, she's kind of done until they reopen. She's gonna need to stretch that project. Yeah, uh, I think she already has. <laughs> That's the sad <laughs> yeah. part. But uh, so when you were coming up, like so you mentioned Blair, Blair Witch, what else were you into? What what uh, you also talked about Brian Regan, which I it makes sense. Yeah, he's <laughs> just so you. goofy. I love that guy. Um, I don't know, kind of all over the place with like what I watch and what my references are. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't think I watch, well, I do, I watch, uh, I like the adult cartoons that are kind of mindless that you can just put on in the background, like Family Guy and Archer. Mm-hmm. They're like, when you pay attention to them, they're funny, but you don't have to. Right. Um, There's like three jokes that you'll be able to pick up with right. no context of anything else going on around the uh, in the story. Right. Yeah. You just, you can put it on like while you're making dinner, like texting yeah. and just doesn't matter. Um, but I don't think I have a specific type. I'll kind of watch just whatever is popular what mm-hmm. people are talking about what was your favorite thing coming up <sighs> that's such a tough question <laughs> uh, <laughs> favorite thing coming up uh i i think my, the monty python was probably my all-time favorite yeah the the, the flying circus the show or or no uh, the, or the uh, movies the movies movies yeah um, well specifically 
the King Arthur. The Holy Grail. Yeah. The yeah. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That's it. That one's amazing. <laughs> Just gags on, gags on gags. Is that the kind of stuff that you want to create or what do you want to actually uh, do coming out of this? Is it because you mentioned, a, I mean, your submission piece was sounds like a little bit more towards the political skew. It wasn't so much political as just kind of like, like it didn't take a political stance on anything. I kind of try to shy away from that because mm-hmm. um, I feel like so much of current comedy is political based. Mm-hmm. Just trying to stay away from that. Um I, don't, I just I kind of like to write a variety of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have like a specific thing that I always like to go to. I just whatever you can make funny. I, that's what I like to try to do. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it be a bunch of gags or like one long reference to something. Just, yeah, it's kind of all over the place. I haven't. I don't really have a narrow, narrow mindset on what I want to do or gonna do. Just kind of whatever comes my way. We'll yeah, see what we can do with it. Uh, is is your goal to in the long run to be a writer more so than than uh, director actor or? Uh, well, I want to do it all. Yeah, um, of course, yeah. everybody like wants everybody to do does. <laughs> so there, I've met a few that are like, I can't do on camera, but everything else I want to do. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I think I fall into that category of want to do it all. Yeah, whatever actually happens happens, but we shall see. We shall see. Yeah, we'll let time tell that story. Yeah. What have you? Uh, so you you now just wrapped your first term. You're into term two. You're now the the uh, rank old timers in the building because uh, <laughs> because of the the gap between classes. I know it's it's ironic. Dude. <laughs> it feels still so new yet. We're the <laughs> you're the veterans. We're, we're the head of the pack right now. <laughs> yeah, got the new guys looking up to us. What uh, what was what'd you get most out of uh, term one and and what do you like so far in term two? Um, what I got most out of term one is the just create from abundance kind of style like mm-hmm. just keep your mind open to whatever the task may be and just look at everything and think how can i make that into something real how can i make that a story that people would actually pay attention to for more than 30 seconds and how yeah. can i make it funny did you do the 10 ideas a day did cat have you have you all do that uh, not a day yeah. a week rather a week yeah yeah and uh, have you kept up with it at all? Mm, not <laughs> like a good student would. <laughs> um, I get si- I get so sidetracked. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to do that. And then I think about like a different thing, like assignment we have, and that could just goes out the window. Yeah, I got to 75 on that list before I just like 75. before I like sputtered out. But then. It was great because through the rest of the entire time here, I was constantly going back to that list that. and pulling pulling pieces. Yeah. And so now I'm at the point where I'm like, all right, first part of this year, I just get to go replenish that list <laughs> and keep on pulling from it for, for the next, you know, six to 12 months. Yeah, I got to I got to go through and do an organizational sweep. My problem with that is I'll just write it on a random piece of paper yeah. or, or on like just whatever's near me and then I forget where I put it. I gotta use the notes app. Notes. That's a notes app. That's a that's how I do all mine. Uh, I just keep a list in there. Uh, that way, I've always one done one ongoing way. list. Yeah, uh, and just as I as I uh, complete stuff, uh, you can do strike through or just delete it from the list uh, once it's used up. Uh, yeah. But it, it was <laughs> it is kind of nice to, to recognize like how often I'm going back and yeah. like pulling something from there or there's been a couple times where i was like oh that's great i I forgot i had that idea you know and and then i'm looking back at the list later and i was like oh that was listed on here i should have just looked at the damn list again (laughs) i've done that uh, i did that a couple times in session one was go back to my old lists and pull from that when we do like the pitch workshops yeah come with you know three decent pitches yeah find myself going back through the list like oh what was that one thing i wanted to do? exactly yeah it's super useful uh, and then you all got to so you. I'm a little jealous because you got Judd Apatow in term one, and <laughs> we had to wait all the way until the end of our term three <laughs> before that for that to pop up. Um, but uh, who's who's been most useful for as far as like guests so far for you guys? Ooh, um, most useful, I think there. Are, I think everybody that's come has been useful in a different facet. Mm-hmm. Like, like we heard Judd Apatow talked about like his early career and just like how he was constantly just doing whatever he could getting out to all these different gigs that are you know just like low level entry mm-hmm. level things and that was kind of kind of makes you feel good about where you are yeah and like just coming into the door and like jumping on every opportunity you can um so that was i mean that was 
that was good motivational. Yeah. Uh, a good motivational seminar. And then we uh, the pitching workshop with Scott Dickers was re- – I really enjoyed that. I think that was effective in kind of preparing you for, like, you walk in and you get 30 seconds to present your ideas and they might not even be listening. But yeah. You learn how to present yourself and what to say and what did things he, to play on. Do you tear yours apart? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I went second. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I've ever heard him actually respond to an idea like, "Oh, that's good." Like yeah. <laughs> every single thing is is just like a different flavor of shit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just a different bad idea that he's. <laughs> dude, I think I went second, and he like I walked back and sat down, and he used me as an example of like, make sure you don't do this in your pitch. I was like, yikes. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, you got but it over with. That was the point with. of it. So. You got it over with. I, I, I was the that guy in my class that I, I was always trying to be like first or second for mm. most stuff for the same reason, like just get it out over with. You know, there's there's no point in in sitting there and, and worrying about it and trying to collect. Like, right. you're not doing this for a grade. Like, learn by failure. I'll go exactly. up and do it. Fail. You know, learn from that failure. And now I've I've got that already kind of ace in my pocket. While everybody else gets to go up there and try and figure it out for themselves. Right. Like. Yeah, I would. Uh, I went back down and just like bullet point. Don't do this, this, this. Everything you said, just write that down. And yeah, remember that. So what was I, the What was the pitch you did? Oh, I did a couple. I don't even remember what they were. They were. <laughs> they were. Not Is that that great. you actually don't remember? Or you just don't want to pitch it to me. I actually. I don't remember. <laughs> I think I only did two because we were pretty short on time. Yeah. Um. God, what was it? One of oh, one of them was a. It was like a play on words. It was really dumb. It was uh, I pitched it to him. It was Broster Damas, and like it was about oh god, what was it? it was about like a frat bro rem- uh, realizes something pretty big, um, and he's like going on a campaign to teach the country about it. Or something ridiculous. I don't even think he responded to the idea. He just responded to my pitch and was like critiquing my appearance and how i presented it <laughs> i was like yeah we're probably do don't you need to uh really talk about that one do you uh um uh watch the good place no we actually i i need to watch it we just read the first draft of the pilot in okay. terrence's class so you know they, they make the doug Forsett joke about like he got drunk and, and like got like 95 percent of it right yeah that, that guy <laughs> that becomes like a side story and he is basically the character that like the show that like Really, that you were just talking about. Oh, yeah, they bring him back it. in. I think it's season three. He's season he's, three. He, they bring it back. They bring up the again. pilot joke back. Uh, they, yeah, uh, That's and awesome. just, and they actually go visit the guy. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it seems like that was kind of the same thing. Like one guy that just figured it all out. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was basically the premise. It was like it was it was not touching politics, but it was talking about like um, climate change and. Mm-hmm. Then, it was based in like the seventies or whatever when they banned CFCs from aerosol cans. Gotcha. Um, and the whole thing was just like focused on that. But it was like this one guy who's like probably kind of drunk all the time, like not taking life seriously, realizes that, and he's trying to teach everybody about it. Um, it's but, a blind leading the blind kind of story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what? Uh, what classes do you have this term now? I'm trying to remember term two stuff. Uh, we have finding your comedic voice. With uh um with uh uh, Fal- uh Falcon Terrence. oh with Terrence wait oh finding your comedic voice I'm thinking adaptations with with uh, Falzone right. for you guys yeah. yeah we have adaptation um then we have the director at work to mm-hmm. film lab to and then we have the episodic narrative with oh, so you're Briggs. getting Dale for the first time this term or did you have him last term this is the first time yeah how do you like Dale love it. <laughs> love that class dale dale is very very blunt <laughs> yeah i i really like that teaching style though um yeah because it's, it's it's not personal it's very objective like look, mm-hmm. this was wrong don't do that perfect okay yeah. i won't do that again and then terrence has you doing his, are you doing the 10 pages a week yet we haven't started that we are we we just started a five page thing we had we did interviews with everybody, mm-hmm. and you had to make a short based on, or not a short, but you had to bring in like the first five or 
five to ten pages of a pilot or whatever yeah. based on some of the responses you got in your interviews. Okay. Um, so that's that's the first thing we've done, but we haven't jumped into the ten a week yet. Have you decided what you're going to actually write for that ten a week? Uh, I have what I'm bringing in for the assignment, but I think I'm going to change it. Yeah. Um, so I got a lot of the questions I asked, because he, he had prefaced it with, these are to generate ideas. So for my interviews, I just asked the most bizarre questions. Okay. And now I have, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to create with just these absolutely bizarre scenarios. Um, so I'm kind of brainstorming which one can I actually make into something. Yeah. He did that in uh, for a workshop for us in term three. He brought in some of his students from uh, from his other class, other school classes, and we had to interview them and then like make a make a short story ba- or make a pitch based off those. Nice. Uh, we did not. I don't think we scripted anything out, but we more or less like got to the point where we had like an outline of of what it would be, like beat it out. <laughs> uh and yeah it's it's a it's a weird exercise it's really weird but it's i like it it's yeah it's we did the same thing totally weird like yeah. uh whacked out questions did uh, you do that early on or was that later no this was a uh, workshop towards the end of term three so we didn't do that with oh, the end of three yeah uh we didn't do that in classes i think that's something new that he's trying and that's that's okay. actually kind of the cool thing with the with this um with the, the set of teachers is that they are still kind of tweaking things and experimenting and trying out different stuff. And so there's, there's going to be, you know, things that you all get to do that we didn't do based on feedback that we gave, you right. know, uh, I'm interested to see what, if you end up doing, um, an adaptation project of someone else's stuff of someone else's from the cohort. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Because that was something that, that I pitched to a bunch of people, and everybody was like, oh, that would be really cool. That so I, I hadn't idea. heard anybody that was like, no, we can't do that because of this. But uh, So I'm interested to see if they if they do that with you all when you get a little further along in, in uh, Thousand's class. Yeah. But, well, I'll let you know if we do. Yeah, it should be entertaining. What did you do for your uh, uh, documentary piece or for your nonfiction? Oh, um, I did... Uh, it's a documentary on the Lincoln Park squirrels. Um, and it, <laughs> right as I moved in, it was like the tail end of summer. Um, and they were doing a lot of construction on the park. Like they had the big John Deere bulldozer out. Yeah. They were tearing up the path and laying, uh, just like new asphalt and mm-hmm. making it wider. I think they actually made two paths, um, as opposed to just the one gravel one. And so I, like I had the idea, um, to do the squirrels and then that was always going on around me. So I tied that in. So it's. It basically is from the point of view of the squirrels about how deer are their biggest enemy and then like and they're tearing <laughs> up the environment and then like halfway through it reveals that it's John Deere. <laughs> it's just a bunch of uh, it's just a bunch of <laughs> It's a commentary on industrialism as told right. from the perspective of a squirrel. Yeah, it's like pushing them out of their habitat. <laughs> um then there were a lot of geese there, so I th- I threw some geese in there too. Um, I feel like you and you and Vivi need to talk because we did she, actually. She sent me her her ducks documentary, <laughs> the ducks documentary, yeah. and she also did her final about a squirrel, like a, <laughs> yeah, about a couple chasing a squirrel <laughs> with the keys. <laughs> yeah, that was, I like that. So you yeah, see? I need to. I gotta send her mine. It was I did it on as a uh, like I was telling you earlier. The my biggest biggest handicap is the production editing side. I'm mm-hmm. just so bad with technology. So I did it on iMovie. Yeah. And so I put in a lot of subtitles, but there aren't subtitles on iMovie. So it's like title captions as um like the the squirrel's voice yeah. is dubbed into English on those, but it's on the title cards. So the fonts are all like different sizes with every <laughs> shot. It's, it's really bad. Were, I thought they did have a, a thing like that on I haven't used I mean, they might. Not maybe in a long time. I certainly didn't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, once I switched to Final Cut, and actually, that's that's something to look into. If you are, if you get to a point where you're somewhat comfortable with iMovie, mm. like look at Final Cut because it's kind of like iMovie Pro. Like yeah. you're you're just adding on other features. I'm to thinking it. about making that switch from Premiere because I have iMovie figured out, but Premiere is a Premiere is a pain in the ass. It's I'm, me. I'm a Final Cut guy. I especially if if it's if you're not planning on being a producer like in the industry yeah. editing and stuff like that like you can get so much done so much quicker in final cut as a run and gun yeah 
user. I might have to make that switch. Yeah. And plus, you just buy it and you own it. And you don't have, you to, don't have to have the subscription. This is the argument I get into every time I, I find somebody that's like, no, Premiere's better. It's like, <laughs> Yeah, but I own Final Cut. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to pay anybody else for it. They keep giving me new updates for free. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I even had a... Bria offered, Bria Schultz offered to teach me. And so she gave me like an hour tutorial on how to use Premiere. Yeah. And within 48 hours, I'm already confused again. Yeah. <laughs> like I went and I worked on my project. And I was like, okay, I'm starting to get the hang of this. Like took a day off from using Premiere and then came back. I'm like, oh. Lost it all. Lost that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like riding a bicycle. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it is a perishable skill. Yeah. Well, what are you looking forward to uh, uh, throughout the rest of the program? Anything specific? Uh? I'm really looking forward to the longer form projects. Yeah. Um, I'm just excited to start making something that's going to be a little longer than like two minutes. Yeah. So, and I'm I'm excited to take these mediocre ideas. I haven't workshopped them 20 yeah. times and get them figured out. So I think term, term two is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, and take take a advantage of the ten pages uh, yeah. thing with with Terrence because if nothing else, like I I in term two I got a lot done because I went from having nev- never written like I'd co-written a pilot but I'd never written one on my own to having a finished pilot and most of a finished feature done in term two in term two wow. so that I got into term term three kind of figured out what was broken about the feature and powered through got the rest of it done and then got to revision stage. Uh, but you, you can get a lot of that done in term two just by forcing yourself like 10 pages, 10 just pages, actually 10 pages. Sit down and do it. Yeah. And it's good, too, because um, he'll probably he'll do this with you all, too. But uh, he had us each week um, finish the pages on a different day or schedule and write in different locations. He, he was like, That's don't don't just, you know. You may always go to Starbucks and sit there and write, but try going and sitting outside or going and sitting in, you know, uh, in your living room or uh, try it at, you know, maybe you're you're a night owl and you wake up in the middle of the night. Maybe uh, go downstairs and write right there, what, whatever it is, yeah. like you just find a different time and write a different way. And it's it's just about kind of exploring, you know, what can you do that just, just jobs you while you're in a different environment? Yeah. See if there are things that you can do that will kickstart some level of creativity or or let you focus differently or whatever it is i think that'd be very helpful yeah i get so stuck it, i always have try to get out of my apartment i have a studio and it's like it's so small yeah so writing that i just feel so trapped i'm always <laughs> like ah, i gotta go somewhere Someplace <laughs> else. well then i i showed up here today and uh you were like yeah i'll be in the screening room i thought you were just hanging out in the screening room i walked in <laughs> no. and there's a there's a uh, uh super was, smash bros tournament yeah <laughs> with like 20 students yeah, out no. in there felder's been organizing that for like two weeks and promoting it <laughs> I can believe that Felder did that. <laughs> yeah, he's he's also providing commentary. He has a mic set up. Oh, really? Um, and he, I think he said the software's Audacity. Yeah, you know, I've never heard of that. But yeah, he, he had it all set up. He's uh, <laughs> he's narrating for the people. I I was thinking about this the other day that that because uh, I'm trying to put together a podcast network for Second City, like trying to pitch that. Um, and one of the show ideas I have was to do a um a board game podcast where. There's announcers that are just like doing play by play announcing of the like, people play other people playing board games and we could even have mics on them too, but just to, to be able to have that play by play of with like talking strategy and things like yeah. that for a bunch of different Dude, board that'd games. Be funny. Yeah. I think it'd be random, but that would be <laughs> you'd have plenty of content if the game takes an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> get a bunch of the guest speakers to come in and play exactly That'd or at least fun. come in and be the color commentarist yeah. like and, and just mix and match that i think that, that could be fun well uh if anyone were looking at this program trying to make the decision at this or any other kind of film school what would you uh what would you tell them uh, i'd say this is probably the most bang for your buck in terms mm-hmm. of just intensity and it's i mean you just do so much you can't not walk away right without learning like I feel like even the little assignments we do, I walk away just like observing other people work on stuff that I'm not so good at, and I just kind of watch them do it. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh wow, that's that's pretty good. I mean, personally, I don't learn from textbooks very well. I gotta actually do it. So this is mm-hmm. 
this is the program where you actually have to do it <laughs> and figure it out on the fly. But it's nice because you're not there's not a grade. It's a, it's right. a, like it's you wanting to do it. Exactly. Which is it's, which is a different I, I almost wonder how much better I might have been in college if if uh if I hadn't had like a grade looming right. over. If it was if it was like, all right, seek out the stuff that you want to do and go do it yeah. and do it to the fullest extent that you can. Because there were definitely a few classes like that, but it wasn't the whole experience. Right. Yeah, I, I wondered the same thing. I was si- so many classes I was sitting in, just like staring at the board, like, oh, I gotta remember that for the test. Got it. Did you ever see the movie Accepted? That? Yes. I, I want to go to that, that school. I want to go to that school. Dude, we could build a half pipe in the lobby. <laughs> 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 and uh, what was the. Uh, Oh, I'm trying. I love at the end when they're going through and they're pitching all the class, uh, the class uh, ideas, and it's like uh, sitting in the park and thinking about stuff. Like <laughs> in the park. mind control. Yeah, <laughs> he blows up mind the control one hundred and one. <laughs> mind control one hundred and one. Think that, but bigger. <laughs> but bigger. I love at the end, like right as the movie ends, the car just explodes and it's yeah. the guy staring at it. <laughs> that was such a good movie. Well, if people want to track you down on social media, see some of the stuff that you're working on, uh, see where you end up after everything wraps up, where can they find you? Uh, I think the social media I'm most active on is Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I use Facebook to check notifications, but I don't think I've posted anything on Facebook in like yeah. two or That's three years. That's becoming a more common thing. It yeah. seems like Instagram is the, is the go-to. Everybody's shifting. Yeah. Um, I haven't really put up anything we've done anywhere anyone can see it yet, but as we get into term two and three and I have more stuff to show the world, I'll I'll put it out on mm-hmm. I'll probably start using Facebook again, <laughs> put it out on the Facebook. What's your uh, what's your Instagram? It's at Morgan Allen, but there's two N's. So like Morgan N Allen N. Okay. There's a lot of Morgan Allens in the world. All the good handles were taken. Yeah. Have you have you looked to see if uh you can register your name for any stuff in Hollywood yet? No, I don't know how to go about doing that. Uh, the easiest one is just go to IMDb and search your name and see if uh, see if there's like multiple. Uh, sometimes you can use your middle initial or something like that, which is why it's Michael J. Fox, even though his middle initial is not J. Oh, really? Yeah, he just he thought just it sounded better. It to use it? Yeah, he just thought, thought it sounded better than his. I can't remember what his actual initial is, but <laughs> yeah, but nice. it was that's Michael Fox was already taken, or Mike Fox I think was already taken, or both. Definitely gonna have to do that. I made a new email for this school just because my old one I made when I was like ten. Yeah. Um, every it, I mean, it took me like twenty five tries to find one that wasn't <laughs> taken. <laughs> I had a friend um, in middle school. His name, his he had the same last name, and he had an older sister named Morgan. <laughs> So, like I knew another Morgan Allen <laughs> in your own <laughs> in my own <laughs> county <Your> circle. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you having me. And that was Morgan Allen. Thank you to Morgan and to the Harold Ramis Film School and the Second City staff for their help. The song on this week's episode was Bigfoot in Lacoste by Piff Tannen. Find more of Piff's music on SoundCloud. The show is recorded and edited by me, Tony Lazzaroni. If you want to hear more from me and my classmates, teachers, and a few special guests, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. If you have questions or comments, send us an email at filmstudentpod at gmail.com or find us on Twitter and Instagram at filmstudentpod. And be sure to check out some of my and my classmates' work at filmstudentpod.com where you can also find links to all of our past episodes. See you all next week. Class dismissed.